The Shed Show is proudly brought to you by McMatt's, the cost-effective, environmentally friendly solution for your shed floor. G'day, Whiskers here, and welcome to The Shed Show. Coming up today... We get zen with Jen in her shed. Sheddicott has some brewing tips. We visit the men and their sheds book launch, meet a man of many hats, catch Redfin in a shed session, but first up, let's play the amazing X-Boss. In this shed is one of Australia's, if not the world's most recognised custom and classic automotive workshops. Greg Maskell has a reputation for the finest quality craftsmanship for every vehicle that rolls through his shed doors. Greg, thanks for welcoming us into your shed of Maskell's Customs and Classics. Now, it all started off when uh, I think you were about a 17-year-old, weren't you, tinkering on your, in your backyard shed on your own cars and your mates? Yeah, yeah, I was mucking around with my cars and, and then turned it into a business and, and now we employ five guys. You've won, a, a, obviously, quite a few awards and all sorts of stuff. And how did that start? I believe you had two cars in the top four, was it, of the yep. Motor X, the big yeah. one in Sydney. Was that last year? Uh, that was about three years ago. Oh, that. Right, sorry, yeah, yeah, yeah. So back in 03, uh, to help Gary Myers get the silver bullet. Oh, the to, Mustang. Yeah, yeah, the twin blown Mustang to Motor X. So we hooked in and we helped him out with that and did a lot of work on that. And then that did really well. And it sort of blossomed from there, you know, and then... We were sort of in the elite cars, but I, I kind of like to do everything. I like to do just nice drivers and I like to do elite cars. So they're all challenges, like no matter how you look at it. Well, you do all sorts of budgets then, basically. Yeah, yeah. And I know we've got a beautiful A9X here. Yeah. And uh, probably the A9X is worth more than the Rolls, yes. is that right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is. And there's a couple of nice GTs out the back as yeah. well. Yeah. Yeah, we, we work with all sorts of budgets. So if someone just wants a small rust repair, right through to a full resto or a full custom car. Oh, mm -hmm. no, that's what I was going to talk to you about, mm. your XF. Yeah. That's done, that, that, a lot of people may have seen that car, beautiful pink number, but that you just, uh, you that, recalibrated that, didn't you? Yeah, that psycho car, it's got a lot of electronics that, that nobody has ever done, ever, you know, on any and car. And an XF too. I'm on an XF, yeah. <laughs> a lot of people ask why, but since then it's, it's travelled Australia, won every major trophy there is to win, so, yeah. Okay, now you conquered Australia. Yep. Next it was the world. Yeah. And we're going to go and have a look at the Expos uh, shortly because yeah. it's out at the museum, yep. Shepparton Motor Museum on yep. display out there. How did that come about? All the way from Perth to yeah. Detroit in America. Chris and I have known each other 15, 20 years, you know, been good mates. And Chris asked me to fly to Perth and do the build and help, help with the fabrication and the bodywork and things like that. But Chris made the decision to get us to paint it, so uh, he boxed it up, posted it to us. We pulled it out of the container and went, well, there's a lot of work here, you know. All the car had to be regapped, and we did some body work because it was already previously done and then we painted the whole car, yeah. And then tell us about how did it end up in Detroit, possibly the world's greatest car show. The, the goal was always to go to Detroit, to the Autorama, right, and compete for the Riddler. Riddler is regarded as the most prestigious custom car show in the world. If you make the grade eight, that's like getting an Oscar nominee. There was 58 contenders for the Riddler and only eight can get in there. You know, so you're up against some pretty serious stuff, you know. Out of all the vehicles here that I've seen so far, this has definitely the most thought out uh, setup. Underneath, up inside the engine compartment, the way the hood opens, the trunk, it's just one of the most magnificent automobiles, if you want to call it that, more like artwork. Incredible, outstanding vehicle. Some of the best work I've ever seen. You can tell all the panels are handmade. The, uh, the body lines are just unbelievable. It's jewelry on wheels. You guys have stepped things up to another level. And I've been coming to the Autorama since I was 14 years old. I'm 55 now. And this is the first time that I've seen something of this level that has just captured my attention in, in my years of coming. Most cars to go to the Riddler are four to 12 years in the build. They don't happen in 12 months. You know, so you've got to have a long-term goal. Well, Greg, I suppose we'd better go and have a look at this X-Boss out at the Shepparton Motor Museum. Yeah, let's jump in the cars and put on out. Greg, 
It's a credit to you. A beautiful vehicle, mate. You actually, you're the boss. I'm the boss, mate. Or the ex-boss now. Now, I believe it's going on tour around some of the biggest shows in Australia. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. It's going to head to Adelaide in November and then up to Southern Ats and Melbourne Hot Rod Show. Uh, there's one over in Tassie. Then up to the East Coast, to Sydney and, and Brisbane and stuff. Greg, thanks very much for inviting us into your shed. Thanks for your time. Much appreciated. We'll see you soon on The Shed Show. Cheers, guys. The Shed Show. The Shed Show. Come on. If you want to be part of The Shed Show team, make sure you follow us on social media. Or you can check us out on the website, theshedshow.com.au. The Shed Show. The Shed Show. Come on. Welcome back to Sheddicket. Now, people make some great and amazing things in, in their sheds. So we've discovered that most people make this stuff, beer. Now today we've got Master Brewer from Bandicoot Brewery, Tracy, she's gonna give us some really good tips on how to make your home brew great. Now Tracy, you started off making beer in your shed? Yeah, that's right. Um, started off as a home brewer. Yes. And basically the hobby got out of control and we decided to take it to the next level and we're actually now commercially brewing in, a, in an industrial shed. Now, can you give the viewers your top two tips for making their homebrew great? Yeah, one of the, the best key points with, with homebrewing is cleanliness. So be really meticulous with your cleaning of your equipment and your utensils. And also make sure you've got a really good sanitizer. There's some great, easy to use, no rinse sanitizers on the market that any decent homebrew shop's gonna, gonna stock and we'll be able to show you how to use it. Also, and you have mentioned before, temperature is a critical part? Yeah, temperature is very important. Um, you've got to remember when you're pitching your yeast, you're actually pitching a live organism. So the same as us, they like to have a nice constant warm temperature. Generally for ale yeast is between 18 and 22 degrees. If you get a bit cold, they start to go to sleep and they won't ferment your beer. If they get a bit hot, then they can start producing some fusel alcohols, which will actually give a hot, solventy flavour to the beer. Is, is, that, is that, that that really sharp, sometimes when you open them all, you get that really sharp alcohol Yeah, and, and taste. you can get the burn, burn yeah. down the back of your throat. So it's it's just a different type of type of alcohol, and it can also be responsible for the headaches that you can get the next day mm, if, you have like to, if you overindulge. So we don't you like don't that. want that in your beer. So look after your yeast. Keep them nice and happy. They'll look after your brew and you'll end up with a good beer. Excellent. So two key points really is temperature control and cleanliness. And cleanliness, definitely. That's going to make your home brew great. Shed show, shed show. Come on. Next up, we get Zen with Jen. And we're front row at the Men in Their Sheds book launch. Shed show, shed show. Come on. Sheds can be a place of contemplation and reflection, but they can also be a sacred space where the body, mind and spirit combine to find inner peace. Hi Whiskers, how are you? Hello Jen. Namaste. Namaste. Welcome. Lovely to see your studio. Thank you. Which wasn't always a studio. No, it wasn't a studio when we first moved here. It was actually, all of this was grey metal. It was just a, a work shed, really, a big work shed. And there was actually a big boat in there when we um, first moved in. Well, Jen, you've done a wonderful job with the outside area and I believe you've done a bit of recycling as well. Oh yeah, we actually, this awning here was originally the door, the great big door that pulled it across as the work shed. And yeah, there was a mezzanine floor inside and some old um, benches and we ripped all that out. It was no roof, so yeah, it was pretty basic, but we've... Um, you've yeah. created now a beautiful yoga and meditation yeah. studio. Would you like to come and have a look? Why don't we? Okay. Let's go. Jen, you've done a beautiful job. This is obviously a peaceful and serene place. Thank you. Congratulations. So and of course, yoga and meditation have been around for centuries, but they seem to have come back into vogue just re recently. Do you think more people need it nowadays than ever before? More than, absolutely, more than ever before. You know, we, there's a lot of um, turmoil and too much technology and just too much to think about. This, we're sort of thinking about doing too many things, getting too many things, when actually I think it's better to get back to basics. But um, to be able to sit, particularly in a group, um, to do that can really, the group energy is incredible. It's powerful. It is very powerful, yeah. And of course yoga, it's not a competition. Anyone can do yoga, it doesn't matter, they can be any age, very young, 
up to very old. It's not a competition and it works every part of your body, not just the physical. And it's an expression of the body and the mind and your emotions and all of those things come into play because when you're doing yoga you'll find that your mind will start to wander you know whether you're distracted and you, if you notice that you can bring yourself back to be in the present moment and that's when you get the benefits being in pre more present. Now Jen getting back to the shed yeah. because it is the shed show of now after you've moved in here you've taken out all the benches and all the workshop type things yes you've had a blank canvas where did you start? Well, we decided that we needed to put a roof in, well, a ceiling at least, because that was quite bare. And then we put this wall in. We debated whether we were going to fill the whole, all of the walls with, with plaster, but we decided we loved that earthy oh, feel. Oh, I love and the bricks, it's great. Yeah, the, the, and actually when we're doing um, wall work, the, the bricks are actually quite nice to sort of hold on to. It's very earthy, which is nice. And of course yeah. we've got the nice carpets and all of yeah, these. Yeah, chose the carpets and put ceiling fans in. And interesting story about the light. They said, oh, have a look through the catalogues. So I was looking through catalogues. And I said, I really like that. It looks like an onion or a piece of garlic or something. I said, oh, do you like that? $500 or something in the, like it's silk. 50 bucks, they said to me, because it had a few little marks on it and it had been a display. And I'm like, I think we'll take that. That'd be great. And I'm just so wrapped with it. And you know, on the Shed Show, we love a bargain too, oh, Jen. I know, love a bargain. <laughs> we certainly do. And of course, you are spreading love and light. Absolutely. The Shed Show, the Shed Show. Come on. And we've been lucky enough on The Shed Show tonight to be invited to the launch of this fantastic book, Men and Their Sheds, put together by this fine gentleman. Well, yeah, Craig Gretchen, totally. how are you going, Craig? Oh, Lovely to meet you. I'm, I'm over the top, but yeah, very exciting night tonight. Well, you've really uncovered the heart and soul of The Shed. For me, uh, I originally started the project more as a, as a business venture and to really add an element to my photography business. And. Um, my first shed that I photographed was my father-in-law, Gordon Millette, and I saw how much um, you know it meant to my, my wife. I started going around photographing friends and well, friends, you know, fathers, etc. And um, uh, back, then about December 2011, I went and found I went to sort out a mental health assessment myself because my business wasn't doing well and I wasn't doing well mentally and. Uh, so it was through the mental health assessment that I found out I had uh, an underlying blood disorder called chronic lymphatic leukemia. So I turned the whole project around to be more about um, really the, uh, uh, a bloke, a uh, fella, to uh, be more aware of what they do mentally. Um, and when they do that, they can also be more important about looking after their physical health and their physical well-being. So well, the shit is a place to contemplate and reflect, isn't it? Absolutely. Your book almost sort of seems to document not just the history of sheds, but the, the life of the people involved in the shed as well. Yeah, certainly. It's, you know, just, it's a picture that paints a thousand words. It seems to be captured with one shot. Well, it's that's amazing. exactly. Well, thank you. That's exactly what I really wanted to uh, to really um, um, encompass was um, was, was that um, I told the story not just with the picture, but also with a little bit of text that I, you know, in my interviews with each of the gentlemen within the book, um, uh, I recorded each of them and um, got what the shed really meant to them. That's a great pick that uh, Craig's oh, taken. Awesome, awesome. Now you're obviously both artists. I'm a painter and a sculptor, yeah. So yeah, you sort of, you do what you got to do to survive. The shed is a really creative place, don't you think? It's home, yeah, yeah. It's, it's where I'm like, I can just, switch off from everything else and just be me. Peter, how are you mate? Hello, Craig. Now what uh, page number are you in the great book? I'm, I'm number 30. You're up the pointy end? Yeah, up the sharp end. You must be one of the uh, good <laughs> ones. Now I noticed this great bike down here. Yeah. Aerial? Yeah, Tell Aerial. Tell us a bit about it, how long have you had it? Well I've had it since 1963 and uh, used it down the farm to round up, round up the cows. Well it actually fell to pieces on the farm so I kept the bike yeah. and uh, what was left of it and uh, in the last few years I've got it all together and picked up the, the bits that I needed and restored it all. All in your shed? In the shed. Now Dazzy, you're featured in the book of course, right up the front as well. Two shots of you. That's correct. He got the centrefold I think. What have you been customising lately? Um, well we, we do customise a lot of Harleys but I build fridges, custom fridges and I'll make pretty much anything like custom furnishes out of um, parts of cars and yeah bars and well, anything just, people want. I'm with uh, Tony here. How are you, Tony? What page are you on? Good, mate. I'm page 182. 
I'm glad you remembered that, but uh, you do have a thing about numbers, particularly down uh, Geelong Way. Yes, uh, 2007, 2009 and 2011, some of the most uh, recent premierships that we've won. And I love the way that the town gets behind the footy club. And obviously you have too, what have you got here? Uh, yeah, just some gear I've collected over the years. Uh, over there, that's the uh, locker that used to belong to uh, Barry Stoneham before he retired. Then uh, over there, you got the uh, portrait signed by Paul Chapman of his great mark from the uh, 2007 Grand Final where Geelong Belt to Port Adelaide. And uh, that's uh, one there signed by the great uh, Dougie Way. And all this stuff resides in your shed? Yeah, mate, yeah, yeah. It's uh, or, or what I call my cave. You're yes. donating some money. You're I'm donating buy. out of my own royalties, um, and the, the publisher have matched my my royalty donation. So the royalty oh, percentage of royalties go back to the Australian Men's Show Association. Well, it's a very good cause. So if I was you, I'd go out and get this book because it's not just right a, here. So right here, it's a beauty. Thing. Yes, right. thank you for your support. And uh, the main objective here is to support one another and open up that line of communication. If you want to be looking shed sharp, make sure you get to the website and pick up some shed show merch. After the break, Mad had a crom and Redfin rock the shed. Shed show, the shed show. Come on. The shed show, the shed show. Come on. In life, we all wear many hats, but in this shed here is a mate of mine called Crom who does wear many hats. Come inside and say good day. Hey, Whiskers, welcome to the dome, mate. Hey, how are you, bro? Good to see you, Crom. Great to be here. I'm glad awesome. you got the fire going. Beautiful. Got the fire going. It's warm as toast. Where did you get this beautiful slab? I bought that for $3,000 down in St Kilda Market. $3,000? No, I actually got it out in bush when I was getting some wood. <laughs> This thing across the top, I know you used to work at the old cheese factory yeah. many moons ago. Is that where you got that from? Yeah, it's an old cheese shelf and I would have, back in the 70s, actually turned cheese on that shelf. Well listen, let's just turn the camera and so say cheese. So nostalgic. <laughs> cheese. cheese. <laughs> now I wasn't aware that you won Junior Miss Tiny Tot. That's uh... <laughs> actually my wife's. <laughs> She's a legend. Now, where did you put that on your head? Did you just kill something? <laughs> <laughs> what happened? Well, it's good to see every man in his shed should have a chopper, shouldn't they, Crom? Uh, <laughs> Excuse yes. me. You put another hat on. <laughs> no. You have Viking blood, do you? <laughs> I actually do. Well, anyway, let's talk about the chopper. What issues are beautiful? Is that a 2005, 6 uh, model? 04. And, of course, you've been on lots of different runs. I noticed you've been on the Off run a few times. The boys, they put on a great yeah, ride. Yeah, I did that nine times. Well, we've got the Harley on the floor and we've got the push bikes on the ceiling. I suppose you've got to uh, make the most of the space. Yeah. Crom, well, just before we start, are you wearing another hat? <laughs> yes. <laughs> now, why are the bikes up here? There's a story behind this too, is there? Um, well, my own days are a bit obvious, we're into fitness. <laughs> and, um, well, I get them down every morning and we do about an hour and a half on the push bikes at 4.30 in the morning and... We're getting dust on it. <laughs> Crom decided on a quick tour of his shed while he sneakily shed hats to lure me into the apple of his bullseye, the beloved dartboard. Now, Crom, I realise that the dartboard is a centrepiece of the shed. Yeah, it is. Buenos nichos, amigos. Yeah. You're always wearing another hat. We don't need no stinking badges. <laughs> <laughs> and you have a major tournament here, I believe, uh, an annual event? Yeah, it's um, a gathering of about 12 mates. It's like an annual get-together, really, because some of the guys don't see each other except for that night. Well, that trophy up there is actually the perpetual trophy. It's been going for eight years. We've, we've got eight winners now. Are we going to have a go? You want to? I haven't played darts for years, but I'm older doing the dough shit. probably flog me. <laughs> I'm ready, Crom. Where do I stand? Right there. OK. <laughs> well, what are you going to play? You haven't even said what you want to play. Well, don't we just go for the bullseye, Crom? If you want to. OK, that's what we're doing. We'll have a game of a ball. Closer to... <laughs> There's plenty of that in your shed, I tell you. You ready? Here we go. OK. And... Oh, that's not too bad, oh, that is it? That is good. Oh! Oh, that was closer! I usually don't play dressed. What do you mean? Well, I can't chuck a dart when I've got my shirt on. Oh, really? <laughs> So how long have you been playing, roughly? Oh, for a few years. <laughs> I can't actually play with this hat on and my shirt and everything. I usually play hoops better when I'm bloody half naked. Well, 
D Rowe, but don't expect me to. <laughs> <laughs> well, Grom, when you said you need to take your shirt off, I didn't I mean. Ah, yeah. oh. how'd you like that? Right in the ball, man. <laughs> thank you very much for inviting us into the dough shed. And uh, thank you very much for the game of darts. You're looking pretty fit there. Must be all the bike riding you're doing. Yeah, and it's time for me to go for another ride, mate. I've got to keep this fitness up. All right, then. Thank you very much. Good on you, bro. See you, mate. Good. Cheers. Hey, Crom, the bike's that way. Oh. <laughs> oh, I need refreshments first. Oh, right. I think he's just pedalling to the fridge. See you soon. Show, show. Come on. We're Red Pin. We've been around since the 70s and uh, we like to play one of our songs called The Bus and we're in Smoky Shed on The Shed Show. Yeah. had a lot of fun today on the shed show next week we even amp it up a little more we hit the sixer cricket tragic come out swinging in the fighters shed shred in the shed with shane take a closer look at beric's akuna park men's shed and shan lyons roars in another shed session the shed show the shed show let's go the shed show the shed show come on 
The Shed Show is brought to you by these loving people. If you'd like to sponsor the show and shed the love, get in touch today. Cheers.